Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're talking about how and why you are interested in the 16 personalities based on, well, your 16 personalities type. So imagine you're talking with an ESTJ about the MBTI. How do you get them interested? Well, the typical thing you might want to do is you might want to say, well, you could use this, for example, at work to have more success at work, to be more productive and more efficient. By knowing your personnel type, you can know how to better organize your environment to make sure that you have maximum efficiency and productivity. You can learn different strategies to talk better with different people, helping you be more influential, right? These are arguments that could get really interesting for an ESTJ. Now imagine you're an INFP and you want to get interested in the MTI. What kind of things help? Well, focus on the introspective level, right? And finding yourself and getting verification for who you are, right? Because INFPs are naturally very introspective people. So they spend a lot of time thinking about who they are and why they value the things that they do, right? So because of this, INFPs are naturally going to be very interested in the MTI. How do you get an ESFP to get interested in the MTI? Well, you might focus on just getting them more into their environment, right? So it's fascinating to be in an environment where no, you know everyone and where you have, can build a relationship with anyone and where you can have fun with anyone. And by knowing the MTI, by knowing these kind of theories, you could, for example, have more fun with other people. You could uh, come up with more cute and fun games. You can find ways to be more entertaining, to how, how to charm every single person, how to make everyone laugh, how to, you know, uh, get everyone interested when you're, talking in front of a group, you know, you can use these kind of st styles and strategies to get ESFPs more interested in the theory, right? And imagine you're an INTJ. Why should you care about the MTI? Does it have any critical backing? What am I supposed to do with it? Does it have any objective value or interest, right? Well, you might talk about the cognitive theories around it, right? So you might talk about, you know, for example, the work of Carl Jung, uh, how we study psychology, the psychological method. You might talk about like, how they can use it for prediction, for planning, for strategizing. You might talk about, for example, how they can use it to achieve their goals better or how to better work with themselves so that they can plan more effectively. How do you get an ENTP interested in the MBTI? Well, you might work with a strategy like, uh, for example, getting better at selling or marketing or getting your ideas out into the world. You might talk about like, for example, how to get other people interested in your different projects and your different ideas and innovation. You might use it to uh, get the ENTP better interested in optimizing their life because, you know, how do I organize my life to be as efficient as possible? How do I innovate my own life? How do I make myself work better, faster, stronger, to be smarter? These kind of things might be interesting to the ENTP. How do you get an ISFJ interested in the MTI? Well, you might talk about, for example, how they can use that to get better along with other people, how to work around people that are very difficult, how to handle conflicts, how to deal with when people have different opinions or why people have different opinions and how to get people to get along despite of these things, right? How do you get an ESTP interested in the MTI? Well, for example, you might talk about things like, uh, you might want to talk about the MTI in a more hands-on manner, right? So what can they do with it right now, today, right? So you might talk about things that they've done lately at work or struggles that they have with their boss or the things that are happening in their life right now. And you might want to say, well, maybe if you know their personnel type, you know how you want to talk about them, how you want to work around that, how you can adjust, or how you can adapt and how you can manage that situation better, right? So these kind of things might help. Or you might use it for analyzing past decisions or bad decisions that they made so that they can make better decisions in the future. How do you get an INFJ interested in the MTI? Well, here you might want to focus on theoretical and introspective and spiritual levels of the model and system. How they can use it to cultivate consciousness, to achieve a higher level of mental state or higher level of connection with the universe and with other people. How they can use it to find more balance in their life, you know, things like that. How do you get an INTP interested in MBTI? Well, you might talk about the, uh, the pursuit and the desire to understand the human mind, right? So the fascinating problem that we don't really know what's happening inside us, right? And we still don't really know what or how the structure of the mind really is and how it works. We still have so much to figure out. And you might here focus on the critical aspects and the discovery aspects, right? What can they hope to learn? What can we hope to figure out? What can we use type to understand? And how can we 
get to know and better understand our thoughts and emotions and why we have them and why we have all these experiences. How do you get an ESFJ interested in MTI? Well, you might focus on, for example, how they can use it to have better, more fun relationships. You might focus on, for example, how they can make sure that everyone is entertained at the party, or you can might, for example, use it to talk about uh, how they can use it to um, get along better with difficult people. <laughs> you might want to use it to uh, think about or how they can have more harmony, how they can have more optimism, how they can have and keep up a healthy and energetic vibe, even in difficult situations, how they can avoid stressors and how they can stay in a positive state, right? Or how do you get an ENFJ interested in it? Well, an ENFJ might also be interested in the aspect of, you know, your ideal self, right? So for an ENFJ, it might be interesting to find out what is the best version of myself? Who can I become? through this model? How can I connect more with my ideal version of myself? How can I, you know, reach my highest state, my highest best version of myself? How can I be more ethical? How can I be a better person? How can I, you know, live in a more sustainable, ethical and kind fashion? And how can I use these theories to achieve those goals? Or imagine you're dealing with an ISTP. How do you get an ISTP interested in MTI? I mean, they're highly critical and highly skeptical. Well, you might want to talk about, for example, its practical use, because a lot of the time ISTPs accept a lot of things that don't have scientific backing, but which have practical use. And as long as they can see practical validity to it, something you can do with it, something you can use it for that seems to get good results, that seems to work, that seems to function well, they might be more interested to use this and apply these ideas in their own life, right? Oh, small, simple hacks that they can use, you know, to talk with for example, their mother or father or how to, you know, get to know or better understand or uh, connect with their date or their partner, right? Like these kind of things might be very interesting to an ISDP. How do you get an ISFP interested in the MTI? Well, with an ISFP, you might want to use a strategy like uh, uh, thinking about how they can use that as a part of their natural self-expression, like how can, you know, um, you learn more about different styles of clothing, different ways of expressing yourself, different forms of music. You might talk about which music playlist you are or which form of color best represents you. You might want to use these kind of visual metaphors, right? Like, uh, because uh, a lot of the time ISFPs are highly responsive to, you know, the practical aspects of life, you know, things that you can see, touch and smell that have these distinct aesthetic values, right? How do you get an ENTJ interested in MTI? Well, for example, imagine that they're working on a business project or towards some kind of goal or that they've got some kind of plan that they're working towards. You might want to think about like, how do I integrate and how can they use the MTI in that goal or in that project? For example, are they trying to get investors? What kind of investors are they working with? What kind of arguments might work well on these investors based on their personality and their needs? What kinds of, uh, uh, work or organization structure might work well based on their team and their members and different needs and values and what kind of problems might come up because of their goals that they might need to consider. You know, these are things that you could talk about with an ENTJ. How do you sell the MBTI to an ENFP? Well, you might get that ENFP in just through their sheer curiosity and desire to learn and their desire for novelty. And you can highlight the fun and creative aspects of this because it can help them develop a more diverse level of thinking where they can see more variety and more uh, chaos and more different versions of people with all dynamic personalities. And they can use these models to understand how they can navigate all these things in a good and positive way, finding a way to flow with their environment and with the people around them. How do you get an ISTJ interested in the 16 personalities? Good luck, yeah, that's not gonna happen. They're not gonna get interested in it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day and see you all in the next video.